Uh, did India's global stature grow under Prime Minister Modi? We are looking at international affairs first. 63% say yes, in fact, India's global stature did grow under Prime Minister Modi. 23% said no, 14% said no response. Linked in a sense to this, is India now the most attractive investment destination? 55% said yes, in fact, people are investing in India. It is a most attractive investment destination. 27% said no, it is not. 18% said that they had no response, which in other words means that they don't have an opinion per se on this issue. The next graphic has India's cultural capital grown. Has India's cultural capital grown? Is India now more recognized in these terms? 59% say yes, 24% say no, 17% say no response. Uh, let's also take a look um, as uh, the next graphic. Is India now a world leader under Prime Minister Narendra Modi? 54% say yes, 27% say no, 19% say that they don't have uh, an opinion on this. So let's just introduce our panelists. We've got uh, Ambassador Bhashwati Mukherjee with us. Thanks, ma'am, very much for being with us. Sujit Bhalla uh, in our studio. There'll be a lot of economic issues that he's going to be talking to us as well, but that's later on. Uh, Nija Chaudhary and Sanjay Kumar. Ambassador Bhashwati Mukherjee, let me come to you first. Um, is India now a world leader under Prime Minister Modi? We've always had a robust foreign policy. You've been uh, a practitioner of India's foreign policy for several decades. What has changed in the last nine years? Uh, thank you very much, Vishnu. It's a pleasure to be in your program. Um, it's a very important issue that you raise here. And I'm looking uh, as I speak uh, to you at the, at the fact that majority opinion appears to be that India is, is, has become a world leader. I think the most important difference between then, which is my 40 years in foreign service and now, uh, is that we have clearly been able to articulate much more forcefully our national security interests and we have clearly been able to steer sometimes a tricky path between two completely opposing viewpoints to support what is India's core interest. That is particularly true with regard to unilateral sanctions, for instance, on Russia, with regard to the Ukraine conflict or the fact that we know when we have to say no even to our strategic partners, if it goes against our core interests, which means also Vishnu, that we are now big enough and strong enough with a leadership which is strong enough to decide for the welfare of the Indian people and the Indian democracy and the Indian state to which you and I proudly belong, rather than to get pressured as we could have when we were weaker and less developed. Okay. As Prime Minister Modi emerged uh, as a as a leader, world leader, you asked. Uh, I have been on the TV channels for the last one week covering his phenomenally important visit. And the one example I would like to give is Papua New Guinea, first for an Indian Prime Minister. Very important. How did we all these years neglect these island states with their huge goodwill towards India and so many votes, Vishnu, for us if we want to put it to our, our Security Council candidature to vote in the General Assembly. Secondly, we go to Australia, the Prime Minister has been there one year, and he accompanies our Prime Minister right. to an Indian Transfer event, which you know with your diplomatic background, is completely new in foreign service protocol across the world. So, All right. preliminary conversation. Thank you. Dr. Bhala, is India now the most attractive investment destination? 55% say yes. Is this actually based on statistics and data that we are seeing? Investments, actually, for example, moving from China to India? Actually, a lot of it. Um, you know, these opinions get formed by people looking at data. Mm. I would hope so, and I think so. Um, and really, there has been a sea change, not just in diplomacy, um, but in terms of the perception of India as a very attractive investment destination. Notice the, the question was the most attractive and I think it pretty much conforms. Look, the last three years, it's very interesting this data set or this survey which took place a week ago that the last three years have been some of the most turbulent years in world history. Uh, apart from the COVID crisis, you've got the Russia, China, and Ukraine, 
um, and various alliances have been changing or have changed. In this context, for somebody to emerge with a world stature, um, global stature under Modi with 63 percent is off the charts in my view. Um, I don't think there will be another leader and Sanjay can perhaps enlighten us as to what surveys around the world are showing. Um, but this is a, a very, very, very remarkable and that would be my comment on uh, that we have to look at at any time a comparative sense. One important distinction from what we used to do earlier, we are now a very, very global world. So therefore, individual perceptions, individual country perceptions are not as important as, you know, as to as what global local perception. Sure. It is this. So I think, um, and you know, the data on investment, uh, the data on growth, the data on foreign investment is very, very supportive. Sure. And you don't have to look at the data, just look at what some of the leading investors in the world are doing and are saying about India.